profile at the field day. We also spoke with UNL Extension entomologist Bob Wright about corn rootworms. For the most part, the USDA National Agricultural Statistics Service sees a nice-looking Nebraska corn crop. This week's crop ratings put it 70% good to excellent with 1% silking. Now into July, Bob says farmers can start looking in those fields for signs of rootworm damage. The larvae are getting pretty big in a lot of parts of the state and uh, with partic particularly with all the wet weather we've had, people may see some corn lodging in the next couple of weeks. And it's important to know whether the lodging was caused by rootworm feeding or not. Uh, so if you do see lodged corn, dig around the roots and see if you can find some larvae. Uh, we can have lodging without rootworm feeding, so we don't always want to assume that lodging is caused by rootworms. And if you and, find some of that, what do you do with it? Well, at this time of year, it's too late to control them, but uh, be thinking about next year and be watching for the adults as well this summer in terms of whether uh, they could interfere with pollination or uh, just cause a lot of damage next year. Is this on schedule with normal? Yeah, it's about normal. I think we'll probably start seeing some rootworm beetles around July 4th in the southern part of the state, which is about average. Yeah. You're doing some research here in Clay Center looking at resistance. We've talked about this on the show before. Specifically here, what are you looking at? What we've been doing a couple of locations across the state is comparing all the available hybrids, the BT rootworm hybrids, with different types of BT proteins and seeing how they're performing in the field and also doing laboratory studies with uh, Lance Mikey, Dr. Lance Mikey in Lincoln. And here uh, what we found is that uh, earlier we had found resistance to the, uh, the BT trait or the BT protein that's in the Monsanto hybrids, the Cry3BB1 protein and this is similar to what they found in Iowa and Illinois and some other states. We've also found evidence of resistance to the uh, the protein that's in the Syngenta AgriSure rootworm hybrid and uh, what was interesting was we, two years ago the populations here were still susceptible to that AgriSure rootworm protein. Last year we had evidence that resistance had built up here too so the thing is, it's changing. We don't have a complete picture of what's going on in the state, but you want to be watching your fields in terms of evaluating whether you're getting good control. Mid-July is a good time to dig some roots and see if you're seeing injury from rootworms. Wash off the soil and see if you can see the characteristic pruning of the roots from rootworms. And uh, if you have had problems in the past with rootworms, crop rotation is a very effective management tool, the best option we have insecticidal options are also possible. The other thing that we're seeing in these trials across the state is that the, uh, the stacked hybrids with two uh, different BT proteins active against rootworms are very effective and there's several different uh, sources of those from different companies. So if you are having problems with performance of the BT traits against rootworms if for a single uh, traded hybrid, the two traded or stacked hybrids are still working effectively. Do you have an idea or a thought of as to why they're adapting so quickly, why the rootworms are adapting so quickly? Well, they've, they've had a, a past history of adapting to insecticides, and particularly a soil insect, they, don't, they have a narrow host range. If they don't uh, feed on corn, they die. So there's a lot of selection pressure. And then if you use the same hybrid repeatedly, where we've seen problems is where people use the same hybrid or the same type of BT uh, in, originally in Iowa, it was uh, three or more years they saw a, a, a correlation with the resistance populations. And we have people in Nebraska who've been using the first rootworm hybrid for five or six years or more in the same field without rotation. So that puts a lot of selection pressure on the rootworms. How long would that area be susceptible? As in how long would it take before you could come back with that same variety in that yep. same field? Uh, we, we haven't done those studies. Uh, in some cases, uh, with insecticides, the insecticide trait, resistance trait persists even after you stop using it. Uh, probably if you do have resistance in an area, again, the, the two options would be to rotate. That would knock down the population so that you wouldn't have a problem in the next years, or use a hybrid with two different BT proteins that are active against rootworms, and those are still effective across the Midwest.